This is One on One. Stefan Kampfer is the author of a wonderful book, a provocative book called Tough Without a Gun, The Life and the Extraordinary Afterlife of Humphrey Bogart. Stefan, I want to thank you for joining us on One on One. My pleasure. You know, it's been uh, over 50 years that uh, Bogart's been gone. He died in 1957, and oddly enough, he's bigger than ever. He was 57 when he died. Yes, very sad. He died of esophageal cancer because he was a smoker and a drinker, and uh, it got to him. Question. Um, he didn't even get into acting until he was late 30s or so? Well, he was in his 20s, but he didn't get into serious acting until he was 30s. Right, he was poking around for a long time. It was an accident. He had no idea what to do with his life. He came from wealth. Right. His Unlike Cagney was, and others. Oh, no, at they that were time. street kids. He was, I mean, you know, uh, Edward G. Robinson had to wince when he shot his uh, uh, pistol off. He, he, none of these guys were tough. And, uh, and Cagney used to say that Bogart was as tough as Shirley Temple. But, <laughs> but on screen, he was tough. He just had that. He projected a masculinity and a coolness that I think has uh, stayed with us. Why? I mean, I mean, let's talk about some of the movies, by the way. And most folks know, but just let's make sure we go through them. The Maltese Falcon, uh, Casablanca, The Big Sleep, The African Queen, and The Cane Mutiny. Um, those are just some, the big mm -hmm. ones. Why, and I know there's so many reasons, Stefan, does he endure after so many years? Well, there are a lot of reasons. One of them is that uh, he, has, he never yielded to any of the feminist pressures or the feelings that man has to be sensitive. He was a sensitive guy, actually, and he was a, something of an aristocrat. He was the kind of man who walked on the outside when he went down the street with a lady. He was always nice to his wives, even though there were four of them. Right. But he, uh, I think, projected on screen a kind of gritty, uh, unyielding masculinity and honesty. I think you always felt that he would make a sacrifice for integrity. And that is, that's what he does, by the way, in the Maltese Falcon when he has to hand over the woman he loves to the cops because she's killed his partner. I hope I haven't spoiled anything for anybody. <laughs> and in Casablanca, you know, he gives up the most beautiful girl in the world, Ingrid Bergman, because she's got to stay married to the man who leads the underground and he's going to go off and fight the war himself. And we believed it. Talk about Sierra Madre. Well, Sierra Madre is my favorite of the Bogart movies. It, there's no romance in it. The women have very small parts in it. And he plays a paranoid who, in the end, is, uh, gets his head lopped off. But he has an enor enormous range in there because he starts out as a kind of guy who is just a, a miner, doesn't quite know where the gold is. And he winds up greedy, terrible, and eaten by gold fever. It's quite a performance, and it's one that's quite different from what Bogart usually did, which was to either get the girl or lose the girl mm. nobly. It's not a noble performance. It's just a great one. You know, the, the Lauren Bacall thing I want to talk about in a second, but Bogart, the other thing that struck me, um, his testimony before the United States Congress, <clears throat> his, his public speaking out um, at a critical time in American history dealing with Joe McCarthy yes. and the uh, pursuit of so-called communists in Hollywood. Talk about that. Well, he had two roles in that. One was not so great. I mean, he originally, he and John Huston and Evelyn Keyes and Janny Kay and many others so objected to the fact that the House of American Activities Committee was going to Hollywood strictly for headlines and saying, we want subversives out of here. And subversives could be anyone from a real communist to somebody who wanted to integrate the major leagues. You know, they were all involved in this. Terrible things happened because of it. Some people got blacklisted out of the business, like Zero Mostel didn't work right. for 20 years. But uh, Bogart eventually saw, and he was a leader, that he was being used by a lot of the communists in Hollywood 10 who lied to their own lawyer about being communists and who took over the House on Activities Committee meeting and, and uh, I think made fools of themselves, and he objected to it. He didn't want anybody to push him around on the left or on the right. He was a truly independent soul, so he dropped that. And people said that he had lost a lot of his career because of it. That is the drive of his mm. career. I don't think it's true at all. He just, he just decided he would go on his own. Yeah, he, did, he always did things on his own. So Lauren Bacall is uh, 20. He's 45. 19. Nine yeah. <sighs> was it scandalous? No, I think what happened was, you know, she was, by her own testimony, virginal, innocent. He did everything he could to keep a marriage that was his third marriage going. He was married to an alcoholic, very violent woman, and even then he said, go to rehab, we'll make this work, we'll make this work. And only when it was 
clear that it wasn't going to work, did he allow himself to get involved with this teenager. And at that, he felt very embarrassed by it at first, but he couldn't stop himself. She was gorgeous. She was different. And the marriage worked. I mean, they stayed married till he died, and they had two kids. So I think it could be said that he made the right choice. He got married after that? No. Um, you said she four. got married yeah, after that. Yeah, because you said four. Hold on. He had how many marriages? He had four marriages. This, she was his fourth. She was his fourth. Last, okay, yes. You threw me off there, because no. there was no there, one after that, not, right? No, <laughs> no, there weren't, but there, all four were actresses, which says something about him. He never went outside the stage. How, let me ask you something. Bogart, a generous, I know this word is used a lot, a generous actor in terms of trying to be helpful to others? Always. Um, uh, there are two ways you can be generous as an actor. One is privately you see somebody down on his luck. You either help get him in your picture or on stage. He did that with Fatty Arbuckle. He did it with Peter Lorre, who was a, a, a druggie. Always helped him along. The other way is to be generous as an actor. Listen to the other actors. Don't steal the scene. And he never did. He, uh, he was always good to the people he worked with, and they loved him because of it. You were in a Bogart picture, you were also in a picture. Speaking of uh, other greats, uh, Catherine Hepburn, African Queen. Well, that was a wonderful, that was made in heaven. Nobody, they weren't very close friends, and of course she had eyes only for Spencer, you know, you no, <laughs> no, no idea of, of romance with Bogart. Bogart's idea of an out-of-town trip was to take his yacht or boat three miles off of Catalina. He didn't like to travel at all. All of a sudden he's in Africa, in Uganda, because John Huston wanted them the to director. really sweat. The, right. John Huston, the director, wanted to really sweat he wanted him to really be sick sometimes. He wanted him to be out She got sick. She got very sick because she was a urologist's daughter. And urologists say, hydrate all the time. Drink, drink. So she bought bottled water, which, of course, was not bottled at all. It was off of the faucet. And some guy had phonied it up. And she got violently ill. Although she made, every day she made the casting call uh, at 6 o'clock, 8 o'clock, whatever it was. She made it. Sometimes she'd throw up between scenes, but she always is there. Bogart. Uh, lived on canned beans and whiskey. He in Houston lived on whiskey. Let that be a lesson to you out there. That, so, <laughs> if you go to Africa, drink whiskey. And and uh, you know he always felt that it was the it was when he switched to gin that's what did him in. He was perfectly good with brown liquor. I got to tell you something. Fifty-seven years after, he lives to only fifty-seven, right? Yes. I got to tell you, uh, tough without a gun. The life and the extraordinary afterlife of Humphrey Bogart, by Stephen Kampfer. Um, it is a must read. It is a terrific book. The New York Times gave it a great review. Other people think it's great. It is one of the most enjoyable books I've read. And I want to thank you, Stephen, for joining You're us very kind. and gracing thank us you. in one on one. Thank you very My pleasure. much. It was terrific. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by Barnabas Health, Qualcare Inc., the law firm of Gibbons PC. Verizon Communications, and by TD Bank. Promotional support provided by The Record, North Jersey's trusted source, and NorthJersey.com. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. One on One with Steve Adubato has been produced in partnership with St. Joseph's Healthcare System.